In today's video, I've got some extra satisfying deep cleaning coming up. We're cleaning the blinds, we're getting underneath the settee and oh my goodness, wait till you see what's under there. We're going to touch up some of the paintwork. And in honour of getting my silver play button, which is still absolutely surreal to me, I thought we could have a little chat about my YouTube journey so far. I've had a few comments recently asking if I can do an update and give some advice and tell my little YouTube story. So yeah, we've got all of that coming up. So grab yourself a drink, get comfy and let's get into it. So one of my very first videos on here was how to grow on TikTok. And I very nervously sat down in front of the camera and shared all of my tips and tricks. At the time I had around 100,000 followers over there and it's grown a lot since then. But I remember at the end of that video I shared my hopes and dreams for this channel. I think I must have had about 500 followers here when I filmed that video. And now here we are 10 months later with 116,000 of you. I think if I sat and thought deeply about how many people that actually is, I'd pass out. But yeah, I'd always planned to do an update video and talk about how we got to this point. I've just got to interrupt for a second and say please watch my face as I see what's behind this settee. There have been so many drinks spilled on this settee and so many things smushed down the side of it and in the middle, you know that little gap, it was absolutely vile. And it's been an embarrassingly long time since I've moved this settee and actually cleaned underneath it. Ah well, I'm doing it now. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Personally, I feel there are enough how to grow tutorial videos on this platform and each of them have really useful and solid advice. And as I've kind of moved into my own on here, I've realised that sit down videos, as much as I love to watch them, don't feel comfortable for me personally to make. I much prefer to film these cleans and have a good old chat over the top of them. Much to the disapproval of a lot of cleaning video fans, and we'll get into that later. But yeah, being a busy mum, this house is chaotic a lot of the time. So finding the time to be able to sit down in front of the camera in a silent space is really difficult. It's just not practical for me at this time in my life. As a lot of you know, I sit and film these voiceovers in Charlie's car and I guess I could do sit down videos in there, but I, I don't, I don't, no, it doesn't feel right to me. Something that's really important to me and has always been important to me from the start is being in love with what I'm doing and I don't want to feel stressed as I'm making these videos. I want it to be a joyful process because I think that translates to the people watching. At least I very much hope it does. But as I was saying, and by the way, I am going to go off on loads of tangents in this video, so please excuse that. But yeah, I'm not necessarily going to give you tips and tricks in this video, but I am going to tell you the story of how I got to this place, why I film what I film and talk about what I talk about. And I do think anyone wanting to start a channel or grow a channel will still find value and advice in what I'm going to talk about here. And even if starting a channel doesn't interest you in the slightest, I still hope you find personal value in what I have to say today. I think it can be applied to all aspects of life. But first, let's just talk about these blinds. I have lived in this house five years now, and I have only just figured out what works in cleaning grime off blinds. I've tried multiple times over the past using sprays and washing up liquid and all sorts. And the grime that had accumulated just wasn't seeming to budge. It was like it was welded on there. And then I remembered a few days ago, I'd used elbow grease on my dad's kitchen. You know, when I was cleaning his house and um, at the back of his air fryer, all this oil had accumulated on the tiles and it just melted it away in seconds. And I thought, I wonder if that will work on my blinds. And lo and behold, here is five years worth of grime melting off my blinds. It is the most satisfying thing I've ever watched. I know a lot of you like to get on with your cleaning as you listen to me talk, but I would advise watch this bit. I sat and watched it over and over again as I was editing it. I know it's ridiculous and I know it just seems like common sense to use something like elbow grease, but it never even crossed my mind. I'm still learning about different cleaning products and I was almost resigned to the fact that I was going to have to just get new blinds. So yeah, made my day that did. It's the little things. Anyway, how did we get to the point where you're sitting here watching me clean my house and ramble away? I think I can best sum it up with a quote that resonates with me more than anything else in this world. It's from Sylvia Plath and it reads... 
I can never read all the books I want. I can never be all the people I want and live all the lives I want. I can never train myself in all the skills I want. And why do I want? I want to live and feel all the shades, tones and variations of mental and physical experience possible in my life. And I am horribly limited. This is how I've always felt, as long as I can remember. And I'm sure so many of you feel like that too. I used to find it incredibly hard to come to terms with the fact that there are only so many hours in the day and so many years in a human life. And that as much as I wanted to be all of the things, all at the same time, it wasn't possible. And that became even more apparent when I became a parent. But when it came to quote unquote what I wanted to be when I grew up, I could never pin it down because there was so much I wanted to do and there was not one thing that stood out more than the other. I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be a writer, but I also wanted to be a therapist or a motivational speaker. I would have loved to have been a comedian and write and direct sitcoms, and I would have also loved to have been a midwife, or someone who supported people in their pre- and postpartum periods of life. Each one of those things individually takes hours and hours of dedication. They take pouring yourself into it completely and wholeheartedly. And there was no possible way I could be all of those things, at least not in the way I'd envisioned them. I ultimately decided to plump for art. It was what came most naturally to me. I loved to draw as a child and I was very good at hyper-realism growing up. I liked to draw and later paint people. People were the object of my fascination. That gradually evolved during my time at university though when I got the ick with hyper-realism. Because I just thought, I'm spending hours of my life doing something a camera can do in two seconds. And this is not a diss at hyperrealism at all, by the way. It takes so much skill and so much patience. But I just had this sudden realisation that the thing I loved to do growing up didn't really make me feel anything. So my work evolved into video and performance-based art. I was very fascinated with alter egos and installations and finding ways to evoke all of the senses and all of the feelings through interactive experiences. And then, a few months after graduating, I got pregnant. Now, I'd always known I wanted to be a mum, but what I envisioned parenthood to be and what it turned out to be were completely different. I think we all have a shock to the system when we become parents, don't we? But I just had this idea that I was somehow going to still be able to put hours into my art and somehow make a living from it, whilst caring for a baby and giving that baby all of the attention and love it deserved. And I naively thought that my baby would be calm like me and just neatly slot into my life. I'd imagine that the child would happily play while I worked and everything would be hunky-dory. The reality is that when it comes to things like art, in order for your work to be meaningful and impactful and of a high quality, other areas of your life are going to suffer. And it just wasn't possible to make the kind of art that I wanted to make at the time and be a good mum and be the mum that Rudy deserved. Because one thing about me is I'm not about to mess up my children. Absolutely not. I'd read a lot about secure attachments and childhood development and how integral those early years are to that person's entire life. And I think it's one thing going out of the home to work and another thing to be at home but to not really be present. I think that's a really disturbing thought and I didn't want that for my child. I'm sure a lot of people are better able to manage that work-life balance and make that kind of situation work for you and your family. But I know my own limitations and I get so obsessive with my art. So I knew I had to put that particular facet of my life on the back burner. And honestly, looking back, it was going to have to happen regardless because I got a Velcro baby and a very hefty slice of postpartum anxiety. So I'm not ashamed to admit that I kind of lost myself in motherhood. And I know this happens to a lot of us. It's a massive shift becoming a mum. You know, we don't only birth a baby, but we birth a new version of ourselves when we become parents. And we have to navigate that and find who we are again. But as the years went by, I became increasingly on edge because my soul was crying out to be creative again. But how? I literally did not know how. Because whatever free time I had, and trust me, it was barely any, but whenever I had a free minute, I spent it tidying up. 
something that a lot of you know consumes a lot more extra time and causes a lot of stress because of my executive dysfunction. Just need to interrupt here again and say, yes, I am painting over handprints on the wall. I just keep an extra pot of paint to do this every now and then because the walls get so grubby. So it just kind of tides us over until I redecorate. I do intend to redecorate at some point, but I've been saying this for about a year. But when I do, I'll definitely be getting washable paint. Anyway, so as I kind of got into the swing of motherhood and found a bit of balance again, I was really searching for a creative outlet. And then this idea kind of miraculised out of the ether. Now, I don't know if I've spoken about this before, but I'm a big fan of efficiency. I'm a two birds, one stone kind of gal. And I thought, what if I filmed myself cleaning and made it into my art? Because it was something that there was no getting away from anyway, the housework. It was an obligation I had to fulfil regardless of any other obligations. And so in doing this, I wouldn't feel so guilty about spending time on it because it was something I had to do anyway. And this concept that I could make art whilst performing the mundane daily chores, that I could potentially turn those chores into an art form, made me feel like I was on cloud nine, honestly. It really felt like my calling. And not only that, with being a messy person, this was a way to hold myself accountable and find cleaning fun. It was a way that I could grow and get better at it. And if you've followed me on here for a long time, you'll realise how much I've grown. If you look at the first messy house clean I did on here and then look at some of my most recent videos, I think you'll be surprised. And yeah, it was also a way that I could teach people about things like messiness and its links with executive dysfunction and autism and ADHD and mental health issues. I wanted to flip the narrative on its head that messiness automatically equated to laziness and I wanted to help people like me feel seen. It's a topic that's so close to my heart and something that's so fundamental in my own life story. In this period of my life, I'd also developed a fascination with dual niches on social media. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's where people have two ongoing subjects within their content. Say, for example, a makeup channel that doubles up as a story time channel. Or have you ever seen those accounts that show Minecraft gameplay and then they tell Reddit stories over the top of it? So mine was going to be a cleaning account that doubled up as all the other things I was passionate about. So I finally got to be that motivational speaker, that storyteller, that stand-up comedian if I woke up on the right side of the bed that morning. But most importantly, I got to be that shoulder to lean on. And I got to be all of those things all wrapped up in one. And I couldn't be happier that so many of you have come to enjoy it here and see it as a safe place. It's my absolute dream come true. I often get asked, why don't you write a book or why don't you start a podcast and keep the talking separate from the cleaning? Well, like I said, it's because I only have so many hours in the day. I can only be stretched so thin and one channel that encompasses it all is absolutely enough for me right now. In creating this channel, I'm now able to maintain that balance between being creative and being a mum. I have time to make art and time to be family orientated. And I'm still able to go to my normal job outside of the home and and hold on to a sense of normality. Because growing on social media is a surreal experience. It really is. And if you don't have two feet firmly on the ground, it can throw your whole life and sense of self completely off kilter. And this is the thing. I think everything happens at just the right time in life. When you're emotionally ready for whatever it is you want. And this is where my advice starts. I remember really soon after having my first son, I started a YouTube channel and I wanted to sit down in front of the camera and just talk about all sorts, motherhood, fashion, body image. I started it and got really stressed out. I spent hours picking out clothes, doing my hair and makeup and trying to squeeze filming into Rudy's 20 minute naps. I was so awkward and nervous in front of the camera and that really showed Trying to film one video took hours. I had to keep stopping. I couldn't stop touching my hair and pausing to see what I looked like on camera. Rudy would wake up and then I'd have to go back later on in the day and carry on. It just wasn't fun. After I finally finished my first video and posted it, it got around 10 views and stayed at that. Then I posted two more and same thing, 10, 20 views and I gave up. 
I gave up and said, yeah, this just isn't in the cards for me, after about two weeks. And it's because I had no concept of just how much perseverance and patience it takes to grow a channel. Yeah, some people might get a viral video and become an overnight sensation. But for most people, it's a gradual, slow process. You're going to get about 10 or 20 views on your first few videos. It doesn't mean your videos are bad or what you want to do isn't worth pursuing. Nothing good comes easily. Even though it may seem that my channel's grown so fast, and it has in the grand scheme of things, what a lot of people don't realise is a lot of trial and error went into it. I spent months trying and testing what worked and what didn't work on TikTok way before I even thought about YouTube. I learned about editing, my vocabulary developed, and I learned how to speak with a flow in these voiceovers. That didn't come naturally at all and it wasn't easy. I was humbled, (laughs) there's a lot of hate on social media so my skin thickened and I got really clear on what it was that I wanted to get across to my viewers. Like, fashion? Makeup? (laughs) Who am I kidding, honestly? That just isn't who I am deep down, and I'd have been mortified to know, as that person back then, that you now see me in my PJs 90% of the time. But anyway, even before TikTok, in the seven years between having my first son and starting that first channel, and now, I've gone through a lot and I've done so much inner work. I've gone through postpartum anxiety and loss, read so many more books, grown so much in confidence and self-worth. My priorities have changed so much. I've got seven years more life experience to offer and those years have made so much difference. I remember at the time thinking 30 was the beginning of the end, that women lose their value once they reach 30 and it's all downhill from there. Obviously now I know that that's ridiculous and it's just something that society's drilled into us. But I think we all feel like that to some extent in our 20s. It's horrible. I know now that when I became a mum at 23, I was still 100% a child myself. That might not be the case for every 23-year-old, but it was for me. And I know now that us women become more fantastic and fearless and wise and therefore beautiful with every extra year on this earth. I know that that first page needed to fail. I know that my relationship with my first son's dad needed to fail. I needed to go through losses and failures to become the person I am today. And I'm so grateful for all of it. So my first piece of advice for starting a channel, or just for anything you want in life, is to trust that things happen when they're supposed to happen. Keep learning, keep growing and stay humble. Take failures and times of impatience to assess what really matters in life. Learn who you really are, your values and what you stand for. And remember that it's never too late to go for what you want in life. My life feels like it's just starting at 30. We're forever evolving. A year ago, I was so different from the person I am today. And a year from now, I'll have grown and changed even more. And that's why you can always expect ever-changing content from me. There might even be contradicting content because I'm growing along with my platform. And there's nothing wrong with changing your viewpoint as you move through life and acknowledging that. You do not have to stay stagnant on a profile or in any area of your life to maintain this image of who people expected you to be. But when it comes to a channel specifically, with any look your followers are going to be growing alongside you. My second piece of advice is to stay true to yourself and don't waver for anything. To be truly successful, I think you have to be doing something that you can't wait to get out of bed every morning for. I can't tell you the amount of comments I get from people telling me I talk too much. Or to shh. I even get you talking so much it's making me anxious. So many comments basically saying, we hate this, just clean, stop talking. Does that affect me? Of course. Because firstly, I want everyone to enjoy what I put out. But secondly, I sometimes still feel like an imposter on this platform. This channel grew a lot faster than I expected and so sometimes I have to pinch myself. And so when I'm getting comments from people saying, you know, please stop talking, 
I kind of regress back to my former self and that person that didn't feel like she deserved to have a voice or take up space. I'm also very aware that people come to my videos expecting a certain kind of content and then end up finding something completely different. But at the end of the day, there are plenty of other cleaning channels out there that they could be watching. And I didn't come here to do what everyone else is doing. I came here to do my own thing and to do it with love. If I altered my content to fit in with everybody else and be more palatable, it wouldn't be authentic anymore. I always say to people, if you're here for the cleaning but not the talking, you could always put me on mute. <laughs> but some people are always going to find you polarising, even if you think you're doing everything right and trying to please everybody. So it's better to just be you and make content that makes your soul shine. And the right people will appreciate everything you do and say and the amount of heart and work that goes into it. My last piece of advice really ties into what I was talking about earlier. Make sure that you are ready. Truly, make sure that you know yourself. Because if your channel turns out to be successful, it's not all positive. Yes, you may be able to make a living out of it, which is just fantastic, but you're also going to get a barrage of hate, a ton of jealousy and people who want nothing more than to see you fail. You need to be unshakable in your sense of self and to have a solid foundation outside of the social media world. You need to know that if all of this got taken away tomorrow, you'd still have a happy, wholesome life. My friends are people I've been friends with since primary school and middle school. They're co-workers from the little supermarket that I work at. They're lovely mums I've met at baby groups along the years. I don't want social media to ever change me or my core values or my awareness of what really matters in life. So I work very hard at keeping my personal life and home life separate from the follow account, if that makes sense. I'm not here for validation or an ego boost. I'm here to do what makes my heart happy and make content that has meaning and that helps as many people as I can. I'm not here to sell out at the first big opportunity that comes my way. It would be a betrayal of everything I stand for. So keep both feet on the ground, practice gratitude for all of the little things and the big things. Stay true to yourself and your morals. And don't lose who you really are just because you've gained a little bit of popularity. Popularity on social media is fickle and can quickly change. So don't make it your entire world. Just continue to do what you love and try to positively impact as many people as you can in the process. And yeah, that'd be my YouTube advice. And I hope it helps a few people who are just starting out and getting those 10, 20 views. Don't give up. Be thankful for those views. Keep testing what works, keep learning and fine-tuning your skills and keep creating your content simply because it's something you love to do. Even if you don't get a single view, did you enjoy making it? Was it a creative outlet? Was it therapeutic? If it was, well then I'd call that a win. But I believe that the people who need to find you will find you eventually. And we're almost done with this clean. As you can see, the walls are almost dry and looking lovely and clean. We've just got to clean the table. Put the cosy lamp back because, as you know, I am all about ambient lighting. Unfortunately, I need to get a new one very soon because I decided to tread on it and it's completely misshapen. I don't think you can see in this video, but oh well, it works for now. It looks cosy. That's all that matters to me. And yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And for the people who've been there since the beginning and the people that came from my TikTok when I was just starting out and this was just an idea, thank you so much for your support and for continuing to show up and watch these videos each time I put one out. I wish I was able to reply to all of the lovely comments. I've honestly never seen a more beautiful, uplifting community than the one in my comments section. It's just full of people bonding over stories and shared experiences and propping each other up and being genuinely decent humans. Yes, we get our fair share of negativity, but there's always someone there to remind me that it isn't worth a response. And I'm so grateful for that because it's so true. Anyway, I hope I'm always able to give back to you with these videos, what you've given to me and my little family just by watching them. Thank you. 
And here's the living room, all deep cleaned and cosy again. I've got my sparkling cinnamon candle on, my motivational videos on the telly, and my lovely mum was looking after the boys while I did this because there was no way I could have done it with them here. So it's time to get them back home. And five minutes later, here's Mushroom doing what she does best and shredding a toy all over the carpet. See you in the next one.